Okay, there you go, Gavin. You're up. This week on Kentucky Afield, you can learn a lot from a book, but you can also learn quite a bit from fish. They are doing the feeding. They are cleaning the tank. Mm -hmm. We're tagging along with a group of elementary students to see how they're diving in to a different type of hands-on education. Next, oh, there's another. Oh. Ronnie Caps is the crappie king. Very hard to even see a bite, but we got go. one. And Real Foot Lake is home to some of the best fishing around. Then, it's hard to beat a summer night spent gigging He's pegged. and grabbing frogs. Got him. Got him. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Many educators have seen the value of moving education from the book into the outdoors. And I witnessed exactly that on a recent visit with a bunch of fourth graders. So today, guys, we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, the interior and exterior structures of our trout. And we are actually gonna compare them with the human body. So Ms. Kramer, this is your second or third year with trout in the schools, right? This is my second uh, year with trout in the classroom. Okay. Uh, last year was very much an experiment year. <laughs> we had to make several trips to Wolf Creek to get some supplements, but this year we've held strong at about 42 fish. Trout Unlimited has got this really cool program, Trout in the Classroom. How many schools do we have in the state of Kentucky now that are doing this exact same program? There's approximately 25, maybe 30 going on right now. Our chapter of uh, TU uh, mentors six of them, mm -hmm. and the remainder are mentored by the Bluegrass chapter in Lexington. This is an amazing program. They really get to learn um, not only just how the systems work as far as the nitrates and how the fish, what the fish needs are, they also get to learn responsibility, they get to um, take ownership of something that is a long-term project. You know, they get to see it from beginning to end. Brandon and Leslie. TU's role in this is you guys help train some of these educators and get the materials together to really have this program, right? The teachers first have a course uh, that they take before the school year begins and then we have them assemble the uh, materials they need. For example, the aquarium, pump, filter, chiller, all the chemicals, all the supplies that they need for the, for the school year. And uh, then uh, the first part of November, uh, we bring in rainbow trout eggs from the Wolf Creek National uh, Fish Hatchery. It really is a very educational program and it's a much different way than learning than opening a book and saying, let's read chapter two and have a test at the end. Absolutely. When you say behavior though, can you give me some more details there? What kind of things are you thinking? So when you like come close to us, we move and how when you tap on the glass for the fish, like the fish just swim away. Mm -hmm. These kids are hands-on. They are measuring the chemicals. They are measuring the, the nitrate levels. Yes. They are doing the feeding. They are cleaning the tank. Mm -hmm. Can I have you two boys help me? We're gonna do a water change, okay? All right, have we started? Okay, there you go, Gavin, you're up. The kids really are taking full advantage of this opportunity to manage this 
this ecosystem. Yes, absolutely. And, and we talk about that. You know, we talk about what do the fish need? What's next? As they grow, they need more. And we uh, talk about when to change the food. So big food, little food, how big is their mouth? So it's just from little decisions to large decisions. You really get to see how they fit in this system as well. Because when they take these fish out and release them, they know what small changes to this water what type of effects that can have on these fish. Absolutely, and we talk about watersheds and how humans do change the watersheds in several several locations by what their actions are. Mm -hmm. um, and so they are, they can really relate it to a, at a personal level because of the, the work they do here with the fish. Now releasing fish in the wild is, is something that not only can be very dangerous, but it can be highly illegal as well. That's true, Chad. We, we wanna make sure that people don't just are stocking fish and public waters without a permit. So th this is a great educational program. We think this is a wonderful teaching opportunity. These kids are releasing these trout into places where we already stock trout and they have our approval. Here are some rules, please listen. Nobody should be uh, above waist deep. We are trusting you. Please make sure that you are keeping in um, an area where you can see adults. We do several activities before we release them. The lessons leading up to it are about microinvertebrates. We talk about what's uh, pollution tolerant and what's not pollution tolerant. So they take their little minnow catchers and we catch all of the creatures before we even get the fish out to see if the creek is tolerable or what kind of temperature it has. Oh, that is, that looks to be a, either a salamander or a, that's a salamander, guys. That's a salamander! We also talk about what does a trout need. So they need hiding places, they need food, they need limited light, they need water temperature that has to be a certain thing. And so we check all of those things um, and then we get the trout out. Basically we're going to put a little bit of water and a fish in each one and just line them up. The kids will walk through here, grab a cup and we'll go back around. Single file, you're going to go past the truck over here. Keep your hand over the cup. They won't get out. Right there, Mario. Put your hand over here. You'll jump out on you. Okay, we're gonna release these together. So this is how it works. You're gonna very carefully walk out here. It is not even, right? It's the bottom of a creek bed, so you need to feel with your toe. Okay, very carefully. We're gonna count to three before we release. So listen for your number. One, two, three. Being outside, looking at patterns, connecting to life. Everything is there for a reason. I tell them all the time, everything is science. And they don't believe me, and then we could connect it either back to the fish, back to the water. These are lessons that they will remember forever. Just a short 20 minute drive from Lexington, Kentucky, Veterans Memorial Wildlife Management Area offers almost 2,500 acres of outdoor opportunity. The entrance to the property is located on the north side of Rogers Gap Road, just east of I-75 in Scott County. Purchased with federal and state funds for stream mitigation, several miles of streams have been restored or improved to help maintain water and land quality. Along with the stream and water quality benefits, this has also provided habitat and cover for deer, turkey, and many other species. Along with important habitat types for game species, Veterans WMA also has plenty of thick grass and other cover for rabbits, songbirds, and migratory birds. Parking is available at many different pull-offs along the entrance road. Parking at the innermost lot provides access to a nearly three-acre lake where several fish species can be caught. Remember that wildlife management area users must abide by the Kentucky hunting, trapping, and fishing regulations. Also keep in mind that regulations on WMAs often differ from statewide regulations, so be sure to review the hunting guide or the website for the specific WMA that you are hunting. For more information about this WMA or the latest regulations or restrictions that pertain to it, visit our website at fw.ky.gov or call 1-800-858-1549.
Real Foot Lake is probably the most unique body of water that we have here in the state of Kentucky. And it's also a great place to go pan fish. Real Foot Lake, if you've never been here, the scenery is phenomenal. The cypress trees, the, the shallow water, and it's just a beautiful lake to be on, and there's so many fish. It's about the most uh, fertile lake I know of, yeah. <laughs> Very hard to even see a bite, but we got go. one. Look at that crappie. That's a good, you got a net? Big old male, I do, but we probably get by without it. All right. Big old male, he's a pound a pound fish. I mean, you can't beat that's that a, nowhere. No, that's a nice crappie right there. Thick. He got a little bit of color to him. Oh, there's another one. Oh, we missed one. There you go. Yeah, I got this. Tell me a little bit what's unique about Real Foot Lake. In the crappie department, February is probably my select time to fish for the black crappie that live here. They stay shallower. They, they have a different diet. Those fish typically are found in our heavy vegetation areas. But then the white fish really starts to get active about the 1st of April. And the most activity is gonna be at the end of April. They're males, they're big old males what they are. That's a pound and a half fish there. Some of these fish in real foot these days are probably as nice as I've ever seen. Now how do you know they're males? They're starting to get the color to them. They're white crappie. But you that's see this black, there? the black, it's starting to get the vertical bars, yeah. But you see the uh, black color that's starting to come out in them. It's, it's basically because they're, they're living in shallower water. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. That one there's taking a little line on its own. You got you a monster. <laughs> it's a yellow bass. If I ain't mistaken, you guys have yellow bass? Yes, sir. It's a big one. This lake extends all the way north past the Kentucky state line. The federal refuge is all in Kentucky on the, on the Long Point unit. But honestly, there is some huge black crappie in Kentucky, and I do make the trip all the way north to catch some of those monsters. They're on the Long Point unit of, of the National Wildlife Refuge on Real Foot Lake. You can leave right here and get there by boat in Kentucky. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. There you go. That's a good fish. That's another good one. Now, this type of wind, will you go up with the amount of weight you're using? I'll be using a 16th ounce on six pound line exclusively down here. There is so much difference between an eighth and a 16th that you wouldn't believe it here. Yeah. If I'm yeah. fishing, you know, five, six, seven, eight, not even deeper than eight or so, I usually try to stay in that 16th ounce. Right? Even in the wind. A lot of people will go up with size um, when, when they're dealing with this kind of wind. I mean, it's whooping right here, y'all. <laughs> it's whooping now. That's that one. It's another one of them good ones. In this time of year, the male fish prefer those logs to spawn on. Those males will stay there through June. Wow. And so it's pretty consistent fishing as long as you can put a hook on that log. And one hook's really all you need. I just kind of bump the wood with one hook. I tell you what, it is absolutely amazing watching you use that 360. You've got to hold your hook right on that wood or you're probably not going to get a bite. And you know exactly where that rod tip is in relation to the, yep. to the scale this, on it. This there. first ring is 15 foot, then 30. My pole is 14. So I can pretty well figure that my pole is just on the inside of that ring. Yeah, yeah. So we got a little log left here, a little bit. Usually on the ends of the log, you can count on getting a bite. Yeah. So about right up here, about like right in there. See that fuzz right there? That's a great spot. See, there's a fish right there too, by the way. See him? See that oh, little yeah, line? That, yep. Right on the very end of it, and I don't know why we're not getting a bite right there. There he is. There you go. That's another good one. If you can't hold that boat, you can't catch these fish, honestly. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I'm set up today. It's a 14-foot BGJP Bucks Graphite Jig Pole. Six-pound line, 16th ounce, and I am using a unique color. It's, it's blue and purple. I got a lot of confidence that one when, when male fish start getting their wool paint, basically, if you will. Oh, oh gosh! <laughs> Look at there. We ain't caught a small fish yet. <laughs> Can't do better than that, guys. No, no, you cannot.
What was it about crappie that got you into wanting to do this? You know, we uh, we gr I grew up right here on Real Foot fishing, and the only professional kind of tournament that ever happened at this lake was a crappie tournament. There you go. There you go. Your approach is much different than just about anyone else I've been in the boat with, and that's why your attention to detail is what makes you crappie angler of the year <laughs> multiple times. So it really is a water time. Honestly, it all has come full circle. My grandfather carried me right here when I was just a kid, and uh, he had what we called a doodle bug. It was a, it was basically a, a cork with a number nine tarred twine and a lead ball on it, about a pound lead ball, and he would bounce it as we had travel. He would bounce it when the doodle bug went off in the little hole. He could he could feel it rubbing up against the log. He's like, that's a log. So we'd turn around and fish it, and that's amazing that we had no electronics whatsoever. We only had a ball and a lead ball and a piece of string. And you're fishing the same stumps, the same logs that your grandfather found same with one. the doodle bug. He would you're roll over. The same ones. <laughs> Promise you this, he would roll over in his grave if he were to look at this screen and see the log and every limb on it and the fish on it. There he is. There you go. That's another one of your stripes, man. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's what it is. Pulling hard, isn't he? That's right. I'll tell you what. Look at that size of that joker. <laughs> these are these are big ones. Big ones. I like to hear that. A guy with one rod that has electronics like we have today can take that one rod and go and do exactly the same thing. It's just a different way of catching them. And if they want to hold it in, the, in their hand and get bit, yes, that's fi as fun as it can be. Some people say, I, I can't stand the fish unless I feel him bite. I want to feel that thump. I'm like, man, I can feel the thump through my eyeballs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever you like. But crappie is one wonderful species to have in your lake and, and quality crappie are they're good at the table they're good to catch i think crappie fishing is headed in a different direction these days honestly i do gig them grab them shoot them there's a thousand ways to get frogs and it is a super fun way to spend a summer night So it's been about a month ago now, I'm searching the internet and I see these crazy girls who like to go out and grab frogs by hand. Crazy. <laughs> so here we are, frog gigging season's in. We got a really warm night, we're in Montgomery County. And what are we getting ready to do? Gig some frogs. We're gig gonna go grab frogs. some frogs. We're gonna gig frogs, shoot them with a bow and arrow, grab them, whatever it takes. This pond has not been gigged, grabbed, none of that for a while, has it? It's been a few years. Frog gigging runs from third Friday in May all the way up to October 31st. We're kind of in the middle of it, but you really want to hit the ponds first before everybody gets out and gets on them. Or if any kind of livestock is out, they're not so good. They eat it down and they get skittish and they run off. Yeah, so it's something I used to do every nice weekend night that I could get out. And it's been a while. So I'm excited to be out here getting ready to do this with you girls. We took a little sneak peek. There's a lot of frogs up here. <laughs> There's a few. <laughs> I'm really excited. So our limit, how many is it? 15 per person. We all have hunting and fishing license, but if we were going to get them by a gun or a bow, you got to have a? Hunting license. If you're going to get them by a rod and reel? Fishing. And if you're going to grab them or gig them, you yeah. have either. Ideal conditions, you want hot, humid, and you want nights that it stays in the high 60s or 70s. Right. That's what we're going to get tonight. It should be good. All right, well, let's get our gear loaded up and get ready to go get them. Let's go. I think we are ready. Frogs better watch out. <laughs> Well, we're right at the bank right now. The pond's just about 40 feet away. I think rather than carrying all this, let's set the bows down. Make a home base right there. We'll make a home base and then... Uh, we'll go around once. We'll go around once, give them a little bit of time. If we push them out in the middle, we'll come back and shoot at them. That works. I love shooting down. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's fun. I didn't even see that one. Nice. Nice job. 
There you go. Nice. <laughs> so you both already got frogs in your head. Okay. We're gonna throw him back. Yeah, they're too small. But they're fun to catch. They're fun to catch. He's feisty, dude. <laughs> hey, so these little jokers in about a year or two are gonna be big and nice. Big fat. Yeah, they're giving you kisses. <laughs> Give me some hands. <laughs> So I tell you what though, the first one we saw walked up here. He was a big end. We wouldn't be throwing that one back. We wouldn't throw that one back, but these are little fellas. There's one. You have to gig him. He's deep. You need me to get it? Nope. I need you to make sure I don't go swimming. Nice shot, Risha. You've got that thing pinned. <laughs> I didn't lose the frog. You get did, the frog. You did not lose the frog. Just got, get him. I got him. I'm about to break your gig for real. Please be on there. Oh, hey. He went way down. You know what? <laughs> Some people go to really expensive spas to get the mud bath like this. Well, <laughs> he got off. He was on there, though. He was. Jess, what do you want to do with this one? Um, Turn him loose. Yeah. <laughs> They're catching plenty by hand, that's for sure. <laughs> but we're gonna give this one here. That didn't work out. Give this one another year or two. <laughs> another year or two. Got him. Nice job. You grabbing over here too? Very nice girls. Ta-da! <laughs> more frogs. <laughs> two more. All right, let's see. There's one, see him? Big enough to gig? Why, yeah. Get him. He's pegged. Hold on to yours, Chad. You got him. Hold on. I'll get them both. Wait. Wait. I need someone to hold a lot. I got light. it. Wait, light. Light, light. Wait a minute. One at a time. All right, here's yours. You got him? Yeah, let me get Chad. Got him? Yeah. That's a pretty good one. That ain't bad. Not bad. There's your frog. We'll take it. I'll swap you. Perfect. Hey, right here. I'm coming on. They're non-stop. Every couple steps we see another. Here's one. You grabbing or gigging, Jess? Grabbing. Got him. Got him. There you go. Gigged one. Fine as a freighter. Stop. Don't move. What? Don't move. What is it? Don't move. Well, right under my feet. <laughs> I told you I step on them little guys. That's perfect. <laughs> That's funny. There's a bigger one over here. I'll have to gig him. You got him? Sure I got do. him. Pretty good one. That is a good one. There you go. Now that's the kind we're after right yes. there. Yes. He'll do. 15 of those and you got a skillet full. That's one right there. Hold on. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> you girls have got great frog gigging enthusiasm, I have to say. Look at that. That's a Boone and Crockett frog right there. <laughs> got him. <laughs> I believe we got him. There you go. Another one. There you go. Got him. Oh. oh, you got him. They're everywhere in here. I will say one thing. This pond is plumb loaded with frogs. You know, we came in here not knowing exactly how we we're going to get these frogs. And we did try to shoot a couple with a bow and arrow. It's just too thick. Too many cattails. We grabbed some big ones, gigged some big ones. And I bet we got 35 frogs. Or more, I think. Or oh, more. I think it, more. I think last I counted, we had 35. So we had a heck of a night out, and Montgomery County is the place to come for frogs. <laughs> we got them. Not you bad. Got, you got plenty of frogs. <laughs> Thanks again. A lot of fun. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Check out this nice largemouth bass caught by Luke Parker in Russell County. This fish was caught in a private pond. Congratulations. Here we have seven-year-old Jackson Overton with two nice channel catfish that he caught in Peabody in Ohio County. Nice job. 
check out this impressive bull elk that was taken by Nathan Stevens of Williamsburg, Kentucky. This is a six by six bull taken in Clay County. Congratulations. Check out this gobbler taken by Jaden Durbin. It's his first turkey ever and it was taken during the youth turkey season in Hart County. Check out this nice eight point buck that had an impressive 20 inch inside spread taken by Griffin Wilson. Nice job. Summer has officially began and I hope you have a very happy and safe summer on the water. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles. I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.